Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we come together for Holy Eucharist this morning. This is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and our service today is from the Book of Alternative Services on page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. You have seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, whose Son came eating and drinking, exposing the rivalry that tears the world apart, may we share his feast and friendship and lay our burdens in his liberating arms. Through Jesus Christ, wisdom's child. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 24. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, ye shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. <clears throat> Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahash's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister, Rebekah, and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads, May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, 
mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahavroi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming, and Rebekah looked up. And when he, she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the fields to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself, and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her to into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is number 45, and we will be reading verses 11 to 18 and the prayer at the end. Hear, O daughter, consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. In embroidered apparel she is brought to the king. After her the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought and enter into the kingdom of the, of the king. In place of your fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes all over the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Gracious God, your love unites heaven and earth in a new festival of gladness. Lift our spirits to learn the way of joy that leads us into your banquet hall, where all is golden with praise. We ask this through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The second reading this morning is taken from a portion of Paul's letter to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not want to do what, what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law, to the law of sin. This is the word of the law, of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But to wait... What will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating 
nor drinking. And they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May these words glorify God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In today's gospel lesson, we hear the beginning speech about children sitting in the market spaces, calling to one another. We played the flute for you. You wouldn't dance with us. We wailed. You didn't mourn with us. It makes me smile because I'm asked probably 15, 20, 300 times a day if we could play. That's what life is like when you have a five-year-old in the house. Play is important, and so are rules. There are rules to participation. First, you need to listen to all the assignments. You're going to be this person, you're going to be that person, you're going to be that person, and before long, everyone in the house has a role to play. Then we need a mission, something to do, and then we need to figure out how we're going to work together to overcome it. I would say nine times out of 10, it does involve hot lava. But that's what happens in our household. We are expected to participate. We are expected to play a role. And my, oh my, isn't life difficult when we don't have time to participate? When we don't have time to take on our role or do our mission because there are dishes that need to be done or work that needs to be attended to or something else that needs our attention. Then all of a sudden we have pouts, tears, frowns, anger, frustration. I think that's where Jesus is today. Not compare, to compare him to my five-year-old son, but it's sort of what's happening. Jesus is seeing what's going on in terms of what people are saying about John the Baptist and now what people are saying about him, and he's frustrated. John the Baptist, just before this, we find out he's in prison. He's been pushing the wrong buttons and irritating the wrong leaders, and so he sits in prison and he starts to question about Jesus wondering if he was the one to come or if we should wait for another. Jesus sends back word to him, but then we have this particular speech. We also notice that people weren't willing to come on board with John the Baptist because of who they seemed to think he was. Somebody that was a little wild and a little crazy. Someone who ate insects and wore itchy clothing. Somebody who they thought was a wild man perhaps couldn't possibly be from God. And so people were quick to find excuses not to participate. It might not be because they're too busy or they're working, but they found reasons not to join in in John the Baptist's mission. And what about Jesus? He comes eating and drinking. And they say he's a glutton and a drunkard. He spends time with tax collectors and sinners. Certainly he can't be from God. We're not going to participate with him either. Now there's a section of this particular, uh, in, in our section today, that's missing from Matthew's Gospel. We, we jump over it in our storytelling, but it is also about this type of participation. Jesus has gone through various cities and performing miracles and is frustrated that he doesn't see any fruit. They 
haven't repented. He looks at Caesarea and realizes that they have failed to repent and thought that if he had done the very same miracles in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, then, then they would have repented, repented and they wouldn't have seen destruction. They, they have less faith in those wicked cities and they will not change their hearts. And I think in lots of ways, that's what this is coming down to. People are not changing their hearts. They're not getting on board and they're finding all sorts of reasons why not to participate. Now, this brought to mind all sorts of things that I'm seeing on Facebook lately. All sorts of excuses that people have for not participating in various things that are going on. So let's first ask the question, what is it that we're being asked to participate in? A lot of people seem to think that church is about getting into heaven. And I must say that that is a wonderful side effect, but that really isn't our mission. I see our mission as being about bringing about God's world here on earth, God's plan for creation from the very beginning, a world of justice, a world of peace, a world of love and support, and, and God's shalom lived out fully. And we know that we are far from that, don't we? We know that there's a lot of injustices in our world. And during this time of COVID-19, we've experienced a lot. We have heard about how um, misogyny and domestic assault turns into uh, a raging gunman in our community. We, we've heard the feminists cry out and saying, this was not unexpected. This is the result of what sexism produces, uh, a toxic mas masculinity. And that is something that we should be aware of when we're talking to our children and, and raising them up to be gentle men and kind women, that they not accept the stereotypical social roles that we put on genders and expect people to follow. We also have heard over this time about Black Lives Matter and how police treat different people differently because of the color of their skin. Really, it's because of fear. It's because of what we've been taught and learned, racism that is deeply ingrained from way back, centuries ago, when we were so greedy that we were willing to look over somebody's life in order to use them as a means to securing our own wealth, slavery. And it has continued on through years in the way that housing has developed. But my question now is, what have we done differently? What are we willing to give up and sacrifice as a church in order to bring about God's shalom? What does it take to participate? Now, some people believe, and it is stated in Scripture, that faith in Jesus brings us to salvation, and that is absolutely true. And that justification is by faith alone, which is also true, not by works. But my question to that is always, what's next? So we believe in Jesus. What does it take to go and be one with Jesus? to be like Jesus, to be a disciple, a follower, an apostle, making a difference in our world like Jesus. Because we have lots of excuses, don't we? I don't want to get on board with this because. I don't want this Aunt Jemima symbol to change. I like my pancakes this way. There was a, a good excuse because the woman who played this particular role apparently was quite wealthy and was a hero in her community but we overlook the injustice that led to it, that it was based on a very um, stereotypical view of Southern manners, and it was meant to ridicule and make fun of women who were black, who used to look after people in a household, often sacrificing their own children for that purpose. We hear it in other ways too. We hear it sometimes when somebody wants to say, I identify with both genders and the pronoun I prefer is they. But we don't want to participate in that program because, well, grammatically, they is for plural, and you're a single person, and therefore you're not doing the right thing. There's lots of ways we find excuses not to participate. But the question is, what are we willing to do to participate? Are we willing to use those other pronouns? Are we willing to give up some of our traditions? Are we willing to change something as simple as a corporate logo or perhaps a sports team's mascot in order to bring about a sense of justice, of inclusion, of love? Are we willing to sacrifice our place, our status, our privilege in order that others might feel comfort, support, inclusion? 
I think that's why Jesus is frustrated. Because he's doing what he can in order to make people included. He goes out and is with people. He eats and drinks with them. And people who were otherwise outcasts, tax collectors, considered traitors by the Jewish people because they worked in collusion with Rome and often used Rome's power in order to do horrible things to the people they were extorting taxes from. What about prostitutes? What about those who had demons in them, who other people saw as being somehow less than and to be avoided, outside of God's covenant? Jesus goes up to them, touches them, heals them, welcomes them, eats and drinks with them. But what is the response? He is a glutton. He is a drunkard. There is no way this man could be from God. Yes. 2,000 years later, and we can still find excuses. We can still find ways of not dancing, of not mourning, of not playing with the children, of believing something that is holy in this place is somehow not represented by the mission and work of John the Baptist because he was a wild and crazy man, or Jesus because he was out partying all the time. Now, you might not think that because we have an idea of who Jesus is and John the Baptist is 2,000 years later, but what about those people in our modern day who are our prophets, who are speaking about God's justice in our world? Are we calling them crazy? Are we dismissing them as somehow being less? Are we considering them too wild or outside the norm and not opening our ears and our hearts to hear what God might be saying through them? Well, I think we are. And I do it too. And I see it. And I'm frustrated by it. And I want to change. I want to be able to live my life in such a way as that I acknowledge the poverty that's in our world and I'm willing to give up a few extra dollars of my wallet in order to go out and buy coffee that is fairly traded or a locally produced item rather than something that was shipped in overseas paying wages that are below a living wage. These are choices that we all have to make, but it's all part of God's kingdom, of how we live in respect for one another. Because slavery did not end. It just changed. It evolved. It evolved into something in the sexual, in, in a sexual way through, through sex exploitation. It's changed in the way we produce things, through child labor or overseas domination, where we, we look for others to make our items for next to nothing. And if they don't do it, we get up and take our factories and move them somewhere else where they're desperate enough to move to work for the little bit that we're willing to pay. We don't like to think that we're supporting them, but I am. Every time I make a choice to, to, to purchase something that I really don't need, that, that could have been made locally, that, that could have been made in a more sustainable way, and, and not in a way that hurts our environment. There's so many ways that we can work towards creating God's sense of justice and shalom, but there are so many excuses that I can come up with. Other ways I'd rather spend my money. Other ways that I'd rather refer to people, other ways that I would rather do just about anything to make a change. So, there we are. We're being called out on it. Jesus is asking us, why do we choose not to dance? Why do we choose not to play along? Why do we choose not to come to him? Why do we choose not to follow the lead of John the Baptist? But, the good news is, we do have people that are on board. And they are calling us to play, to dance, to sing. They're calling us to join in. And I'm sure they're feeling frustrated. I'm sure that after a lifetime of trying to make difference in our world, they're starting to wonder if their contribution made any difference at all. And I think that's the concluding paragraph in today's gospel. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. For those of you who do play along and participate more than I do, I appreciate you, and I appreciate what you are saying. I hear you calling out, and I am trying to find ways of incorporating that gospel message into my everyday living. I've been learning for years, and I will probably continue to learn for years, slowly growing and developing into what God wants me to be. 
It is a slow process. It can be a painful process, an emotional process, but I am open to it. I want to play along, and I hope that you do too. I hope that you're hearing this message this morning and are going to start asking some tough questions about what you have to change in your life, about your mindset, about your purchases, about how you refer to people, and start to think about different ways that you can help to make God's shalom a reality. May these words help in creating that sense of God's kingdom here on earth. On page 189, I invite you to join in the Apostles' Creed, the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. prayers of the people this morning. We pray for the work of our diocesan church family. As we discern our future leadership needs and ministry opportunities. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we've been asked to pray for the ministry of the Church of the Good Shepherd in Beaver Bank, the Church of the Holy Spirit, Mount Uniac, and All Saints, Bedford. We also remember, excuse me, our prayer partners, St. George's, New Glasgow, and St. Andrew's, Lost Road. <clears throat> let, excuse me, let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Bishop Ron and for all bishops and other ministers our priest here at St. Luke's, Matthew, that they remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, giver of all good gifts, look on your church with grace. Guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for the Diocese of Nova Scotia and PEI, that we may receive a faithful servant who will care for your people and support us in our ministries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. O oh Lord, you are a God of peace. Give peace to your church and peace among nations. Peace in our homes and hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty, Almighty, most merciful God, we remember before you the homeless, the destitute, and the sick. 
And this morning, our prayers are bid for Andrew, Barb, Bobby, Clifford, Fred, Helen, J.D., Jason, Judith, Karen, Kathy, Leona, uh, Nicola, Oliver, Owen, Pat, Phil, Sylvia, Vi, Wilfred, and for all those we name now both aloud and in the silence of our hearts. We remember the aged and all who have no one to care for them. Heal those who are broken in body and spirit and turn their sorrow into joy. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon those who live with injustice, terror, and disease and death as a constant in their lives. Help us to eliminate cruelty wherever it is found. Strengthen those who seek equality for all. Lord, hear our prayer. In this time of the coronavirus, we are experiencing a new lifestyle. Our lives have changed in how we protect ourselves against the spread of this virus. We ask God for guidance and protection and the courage to carry on. We will get through this with God's help. O oh Lord, give us perseverance and wisdom to do the right thing and to protect one another. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who confess the name of Christ. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. 
turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, so that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer today is the Supplemental Eucharistic Prayer 1, and that's found in the booklet. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God our Creator. Holy God, lover of creation, we give you thanks and praise, for in the ocean of your steadfast love you bear us and place the song of your Spirit in our hearts. When we turn from your love and defile the earth, you do not abandon us. Your spirit speaks through Huldah and Micah, through prophets, sages, and saints in every age to confront our sin and reveal the vision of your new creation. Joining in the song of the universe, we proclaim your glory, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ to share our fragile humanity. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you open the path from brokenness to health, from fear to trust from pride and conceit to reverence for you. Rejected by a world that could not bear the gospel of life, Jesus knew death was near. His head anointed for burial by an unknown woman. Jesus gathered together those who loved him. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his friends saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we gather at this table in response to his commandment to share the bread and cup of Christ's undying love and to proclaim our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Breathe your Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the universe, upon these gifts that we bring to you, this bread and this cup, ourselves, our souls and bodies, that we may be signs of your love for all the world and ministers of your transforming purpose. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, creator of all, and we bless your holy name forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. I am the bread of, I am the bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Give us this bread forever. I am the vine, you are the branches. May we dwell in him as he lives in us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
For those watching at home, I now invite you to find the prayer that is in the description of this video and join with us in spiritual communion, if you so wish. Let us pray. O God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his bread in the world, so that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service of Holy Eucharist. 
We upload services on Wednesdays and Sundays. Please find in the, uh, in the description of this video uh, the link to download any prayer services or liturgical books that might be of benefit for your use at home through the National Church webpage, as well as a link where you can click to give a donation online through Canada Helps to our parish. If you have any prayer requests, please include them in the comments by saying pray for or give thanks for, and we ask that you only use the first name of those folks so that we can keep a confidentiality. Thank you for joining us in worship. The liturgy has ended, now the service begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.